final track session in the B2B and we're gonna have Kelly Jo Mitchler from the Milwaukee Tool. So I'll give it up for her. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of background myself and kind of start out with a little bit of background about our company too so that you can understand um, why we want to talk about selling new products business to business. So a little bit about me. Um, I was a UW-Whitewater graduate in 2009. Um, in my senior year, we actually had the first AMA conference, so I was president when we launched the first one of these. So I'm very excited to come back and, and be here with you all on today, um, just because I think it's really created a great thing. I started with Milwaukee Electric Tool, or rather our parent company, Tektronic Industries, in 2009 upon my graduation. Um, I went to our field representative sales role, which was in Las Vegas, Wisconsin, or Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, I worked in the Home Depots there for about a year and two months, so a little bit over a year. I love Nevada, though I'll tell you they don't have seasons there. Um, from there, I took a role with Milwaukee Tools specifically. Um, we have a territory representative role that lets you sell to direct to distributors. Um, who then sell our product to consumers. So it was a B2B role. Um, I managed a $1.8 million territory and I sold to a vast array of different types of distributors. And I was in that role for about six to eight months when I took a job at corporate. I did an analyst sales coordinator role for our national accounts. So our huge multi-million dollar accounts outside of the Home Depot. and. Um, and then I'm in my current role now. I manage our farm and agriculture channel. So um, the mills and blains of the world throughout the US, I make sure that the sales guys for those accounts have the promotions, the, the POP, so the, the posters, the merchandising that they need to be able to sell it. And uh, every deal you see on a Menards, or not a Menards, a Mills commercial is from the brainchild of me now. So um, that's a little bit about what I do now for Milwaukee Electric Tool. To give you a little bit of insight about our company. So our company started in 1924 and how we really actually began is we manufactured and, and actually fixed motors. We were one of the best motor fixers in all of Wisconsin and people came to us to fix their motors. Well, we were very good at doing it and we decided it wouldn't be that hard to start manufacturing them. Now back in that day and age around the 1920s you have the Henry Ford factory line. So what people got really good at doing was making a lot of the exactly same thing. So what we got really good at was making tons and tons of motors. People put the exactly same motor on, on a tool as they would end up putting on a different kind of machine. It didn't matter that they had different output. Back then it mattered that you were manufacturing a, a motor at a very good cost. What ended up happening is we partnered with Henry Ford. We were the first tools used on his factory line to make his car. So the first tools were very different than the tools you see today, but they were industrial grade and they were made for working on metal and putting the cars together. Over time, after that kind of factory line boom died off, we decided to focus on manufacturing just those motors and doing those motors very well. We were actually the first inventor of our flag trial product, the Sawzall. Um, we still have the most patents out there on it today. I can guarantee you that um, in terms of vibration and performance, our, patent and our patents have us locked down for a very long time for still having the best product on the market. Um, things like that really got us into metalworking, got us into core users for us, which are plumbers, electricians, people who do this for a living and want to spend a lot of money on a tool. We developed other core products like a right angle drill, which they use, electricians use daily and constantly do when they're framing out a house. A bandsaw, which cuts metal and heavy piping that is used constantly when they make large buildings like this. Um, and that's really our history. We did that for a very long time and we're very good at corded tools. We tried out actually one of the first cordless tools. It was a car battery hooked up to a sawzall. 
it ended up not doing very well. And that was about back in the 1940s. So we laid off actually of battery technology for a very long time. Um, but then came along uh, polymers and um, different ways to take things from metal, which people always thought metal is durable. Metal is durable, but you drop that metal and it's no longer that durable anymore. It cracks, it breaks, and we've come a long way with technology of plastics that now we're able to offer much um, lighter weight durable tools and that led to also battery technology. So um, we, we switched over to offering a lot more cordless tools. We now offer a full array of accessories, um, heavy duty tools. We, we offer a lot and I'll go into more detail about some of them, but um, it's really given us a full offering to be able to offer that core user base everything they need to get their job done. So we were bought out by our parent company, um, Tektronic Industries, in 2005. And what we had done in the past is we had gotten very good at doing tons of different products and doing them all pretty well. Um, but the problem is, is that we were trying to be everything to everyone. We were trying to offer um, woodworking products, cordless drills. We even made a chainsaw. We made pneumatic products for roofers. We were trying to offer anyone who ever touched a house while being built a product. The problem is you don't do that very well. And when you spread yourself so far out, you also spread yourself too thin. So what we decided to do is focus on four core trades. These are our four core users as we see them. They're the people who will spend a lot of money on tools. They're also pro-grade people. So they're the ones who make a living off of using these tools. They're electricians, plumbers, um, remodelers, which is MRO, maintenance, repair, and operations. So the people who take care of this lovely building would be considered maintenance, repair, and operations. And then remodelers. Those are our four core trades that we decided to make every product for them going forward. So product lines. As I said, we went into cordless tools. We now offer the fastest growing cordless tool platform on the market. Um, we have three current cordless um, voltages. We have an M28, which is a 28 volt, 18 volt, which is your classic, every guy has an 18 volt tool. And then we also offer our 12 volt, which is mainly for those MRO people who need products and portability for them. We offer a lot of corded tools. Our base has always been corded, so we still do that. Accessories, you gotta have something to use with those tools. Accessories are what we call what pays the bills because everyone uses them um, and they need to use them constantly to get their job done. Recently, within the last four years, we got into hand tools, which is a new market for us. We were innovative when we went into this market and it actually got us a lot of market share. And then test and measurement we also went into in the last five years and that we also offered innovations that hadn't been done in over 30 years in that market. New to market and we already hold major market share in it. So, a little bit about our Milwaukee Tool representatives. Um, we have about 300 plus reps currently in the field for Milwaukee Electric Tool. And how we set up our sales structure is these Milwaukee Tool representatives cover a large geographic region. So for myself, how I said I had a $1.8 million territory, I ended up being based in St. Louis. I covered almost all of Missouri and Southern Illinois. And so what they do is they have a vast array of distributors. We don't sell to the Home Depot with our, our core sales guys. What we actually do is we sell to everyone else. So you have your plumbing houses, your retail locations, um, even your electricians, and they are the face of our organization for those people in that region. They sell the full line of our catalog, so unlike Home Depot that just has some of our products, these guys cover everything we have. They'll offer anything to any customer, and once again, they sell business to business. The goal is not to do cold calls. The goal is to take that current base you have and grow it. Currently, we're growing about 12% domestically and 20% um, internationally, so our guys are doing a really good job right now. Um, but that just gives you a little idea of about our sales guys and what they're expected to do. So these sales guys, they cover everything for all these different types of distributors. Now these distributors sell to those core users I was referring to, but they're all very different, just like their logos. You have all different types, and the crazy part is, our strategy is not just to sell to these core users, 
Part of our strategy and why we've been able to grow so much domestically is that we focus on innovation. So new products, new to world markets, and new to world solutions for our core end users. So take this amount of distributors and imagine that we introduced in 2012 alone over 180 new products. Now these are not replacements, these are 180 new products to our product line. So you have to go into every one of those distributors and figure out how you are going to get as many of those 180 new products into them. And that's where a lot of the, the, the trouble and um, the hard part in understanding a, a sales rep that tells business to businesses. Um, rather than selling to a customer, you have to be extremely strategic. You have to know your customer better. Everyone talks relationships, and then relationships only happen when they trust you and your strategic goals for them. So we're going to switch to a video real quick. Brushless, just smooth, and long battery life. To my opinion, new M18 fuel drills are the benchmark for all drills. Fuel is energy efficiency. Unstoppable. Torque is unbelievable. Awesome. Awesome. I don't know how to describe it. It's just awesome. It'll outlast any drill that I've used. Can't wait to get one. From one to ten, it's a ten. Driving screws into the wood like nothing. Perfect. There, there's nothing you can change to make it any better. It goes when you want it to go. That's what it should do. Twice as much power, twice as fast, twice as much better. The fuel keeps you going throughout the day, keeps you working. Power, power and drive. Fuel. Fuel. Milwaukee fuel. 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 Driven down for four. Driven down for four. It's just the fuel, the comfort, the power. It's everything that we're looking for. So fuel is our newest line of, of drills and impacts. It's brushless technology. All of our sales reps were tasked with making this their top new product priority in 2012. Now a drill makes it a little bit easier than other things, but after seeing that video, how many of you guys think that you could actually sell this product or would be able to sell this product to a distributor? Quite a few did a good job. One thing to keep in mind, is that yes, we are going to sell a tool like you would sell any other tool. You look at the features and you look at the benefits. So up to 10x longer motor life, that's a feature. For those of you who've taken a lot of sales classes, you know that whenever you sell, you give a feature, but you have to tell them what the benefit is. 10x motor life, you just save that company a lot more money. They were buying a lot less drills every year. They just had cost savings because their guys aren't busting out or blowing out their motors as much anymore cost savings and a reward to that end user. Up to 25% more power, well that just makes their job easier. It's time savings, but it also saves their arm, which is heavy. These things are a lot more lightweight. And 50% more runtime, that's a lot less money that a, a company has to pay an, a, one of their electricians or one of their plumbers because this battery has enough runtime to get that full job done that they need to get done. Those are the features and benefits of the tool. And you saw from the fuel story, the, the tool product story. Every, every new product we launch has a story. And I think it has to, to get people excited, to get people interested. And when you're selling to, to a distributor, you need to get them excited. You need to tell them it's innovative and get them interested. But that's the same pitch you would use for an end user. That's exactly how you would sell it to an end user. The difference with distributors is, once you sell this to an end user, you sell them on those features and benefits, they want to buy it and they put the money down, you're pretty much done. Maybe they have a problem with the tool, maybe you have to end up doing a return, but your part of the job is done. And they don't take on any risk. Distributors, on the other hand, when you sell in that product, they take on a lot of risk. They have to make a huge investment to take in any new product. That's extra space that they have to add to their store, which they might not have. That's extra, extra time they have to spend informing their employees about this new product. 
That's extra product education, updating that merchandising, finding new, new ways to get this out there. They incur it financially, and also they might buy in big. They might buy in real big, and this doesn't sell a single one. They incur a lot more risk than your end user does. So you have to sell a tool completely different to an, to an end user than you do a distributor, just due to the things that they have to worry about. So questions that I think are really important to ask yourself before you go in and pitch a new product to a distributor or any B2B sales situation is, especially for us, does this product align with our customer base? I told you that we launched 180 new products this year alone. If you went to your distributor 180 times and asked for something new, they would stop listening eventually. So you have to start making sure that you're, you're communicating them what really will sell and care about their business as much as, as they do. So for example, this product right here, this is a new product that we launched at the start of the year. It's called a fluorescent light tester. So we don't have any fluorescent lights in, in this part of the building, but those long strips of lights that you see everywhere as you walk through the halls, those are fluorescent lights. And what ends up happening is when they go out, no one knows why they go out, or at least they didn't before. There's one of three reasons why it could go out, and what they did is they kept testing until they figured out what reason was the reason why the light was out. What that did is it caused extra time, it caused extra money, and it didn't save anyone anything. So what we did is, is we designed a new-to-world product that made testing those fluorescent lights a lot easier. It told you what was the problem right away so that you didn't waste extra money or product trying to fix things and wasting time. The thing with this is there are only two of our core user groups that are going to end up using this product. Electricians and maintenance, repair, and operations are the only two that are going to end up using it. What you, what you have to think about is, does this fit the customer base? When you have a full territory that you're looking at all different distributors, you're only going to put this in front of the ones who actually care about this product, whose customers are actually going to pay for it, and who you know you will sell through the product with. You also have to worry about timing. So not so much with the product with this, but we don't launch a lot of new products in Q4. The reason being, our industry is so focused on Black Friday, getting into that black, getting that sale of the Christmas deal, that we don't launch hardly any new products in Q4 because they get lost in, in all of the other things that buyers and distributors are worried about selling the rest of the product. Also, what is your buyer's likely level of interest? Everyone thinks everyone's going to be as excited about everything, but lots of times when you sell to a buyer, it's like selling to an end user but who doesn't want to take on any of that. Most end users are coming to you because they want that product. A buyer, they don't always want an additional product in their run. They don't always want to. You got to make them excited. And you, you also have to gauge that level of interest and save it for a time when you know they need it. So strategically, if you bring in this product, we'll offer this promotion for you. If you do this, then we will do this. A lot of that strategy comes in with new products. One of the other things you have to think about and come to them already prepared with is placement. So for some distributors, they don't have these displays, but they have catalogs. They have catalog placement. Who are you going to take out to make room for this new product? If we're making extra room for it, you have to guarantee amount of sales, or you might have to pay in. To get a product added to a catalog, you likely have to pay an extra three to $5,000 to that distributor. So you have to worry about catalogs. You also have to worry about physical placement. Our tools and, and a lot of products, think about Walmart, they take up a lot of space, a lot of shelf space. And shelf space is money. Business to business distributors always think about how much more can I get for my money and is this going to sell through and is this worth it? So placement is a huge part of when you're selling to a distributor. You come already ready with where are we going to put this, what else are we going to take out to make room for this, or, or their part so they don't have to think about it. Price point and margin. Margin is a huge thing when you are dealing business to business. They want to make sure that they are meeting their marginal standards. And they always have a set margin in mind. So tools make about 20 to 30 points margin. Other products, like say clothing, you're going to make 50 to 60 points margin. Buyers already have ingrained in their mind what that marginal amount is. And on everything you do, you're going to have to prove to them that the margin is worth it. 
If it's a low margin product, it better be innovative, it better be interesting, and you're probably going to have to do something extra for them to make them want to incur that. Sell in and sell through. Every new product that we bring to a distributor, we automatically include a sell in plan. Unlike an end user, these guys are taking on that risk. They're taking on that money of stocking it permanently. And so what we have to do is lots of times create these stocking packages. So when you buy so many units, we'll give you this for free. When you buy so many of this, we'll give you that for free. Or we'll give a discount to it. It helps lessen that risk. It helps lubricate that, that conversation about getting this new product in their store, and it makes it easier. This is automatically a part of every new product that we launch. We also do promotional calendars. So right when you, you suggest a new product, you're also going to have to give them a full year plan of the promotions for it. How are you going to sell through it? Whether it's flyers or tool days or whether it's an actual new lower price or buy this, get this free, they want to know how someone is going to be encouraged to buy it. Lastly, getting those flyers, those promos to actually get the sell through. The buyer may be excited about this new product, now we have to put it in the marketplace. You have to get some images that get it um, interested and get people interested. You also have to watch POS, so the actual sell-through. Most of our distributors provide us with the actual sell-through products. If the product isn't selling through, we're not doing something right. It's not on them, it's on us to make sure that this stuff sells through and makes it profitable for both them and us. Otherwise, they won't be doing reorders. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of if selling business to business can be a lot different than selling just to an end user. It's not just features and benefits and getting you excited about a new tool or a new product. Lots of times it's a huge investment that involves strategy, planning, and, and keeps you ingrained for a long amount of time so that when they make the investment, when they take on that risk, you made it a lot easier for them right off the bat. So that's it. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, been up like a how has it like been a problem to the business like something like that so um certain distributors uh for example especially catalog based ones um don't like adding new products unless they're really excited about it and lots of times um we have to come in with a plan a full year plan for them so for example that fluorescent light tester it's a brand new to world product. Yes, it got people excited, but a lot of people also said no one's going to know what this is. It might save people time, but what are you going to do to raise awareness? So for the fluorescent light te tester, for our, our number two customer, which is Granger, who's an industrial house, what we actually had to do was show them all the press releases that we were launching. We had to show them how much money we were spending on advertising to help raise awareness for that fluorescent light tester. They wanted to know that if they're going to take on the risk of doing this, that we were going to do something too. And what we did also in, in conjunction with them is we partnered with a lighting company, fluorescent lighting company. So it's their top fluorescent lighting distributor partnering with us who just made a tool for fluorescent lights. And we did it exclusively through Granger to get it listed that we offered a promotion when you buy so many lights, you get our tool free. We're working together and lowering the prices overall. It helps drive sell through, but it also shows that we're a partner to that business. Um, I think once I came to corporate, I've never heard the word partner so much. Everyone believes that your distributor should be a partner and you should be a partner to them. And, and sometimes if they don't want to bring it in, you have to show how big of a partner you'll be. <laughs> All right, obviously you have like a lot of new innovative products. Have you thought about doing anything or is there any plans to do like moving into, I don't know, like kitchen appliances or anything like that or, or even with like sustainable energy, obviously electric motors are huge rather than like oh, getting away from gas. Like yeah, motors. we don't actually do anything gas. Um, uh, brushless was actually one of our more innovative products. It's not technically sustainable, but um, 
where brushless came from is you know those fans in the bottom of your computer that go to cool the battery off? Well, the problem with them in the past of computers is they drew too much of the battery. They would draw tons and tons of the battery, and so they developed a brushless motor, which is basically how a motor works, is there's copper spinning, and that drives the energy. Well, they actually did it electronically. So the copper's still spinning, but there's no longer um, energy to make it spin. Electronically, they make it spin. No longer brushes to get it started and keep it going, essentially, is what it is. So um, brushless started with a small thing in, in computers. What we did is, is we took that technology and blew it up to tools. Same thing with lithium ion. Lithium ion is the most sustainable battery platform. We were the first to move into lithium ion. We were the first to market with lithium ion batteries, which are the batteries in your cell phones. We uh, worked actually with a battery company in Canada because no one would work with us at first. Um, electronics were where the money was. Everyone was buying the lithium ion electronics. We had to actually work directly with a, a small battery distributor in uh, Canada to develop a good compound for tools because sadly lithium ion is not created equal. Uh, you don't drop your electronics a lot, you drop a tool a whole lot, and they would die. So um, we were the first to market with a lithium ion compound. We patented it, and I can tell you a lot of our, our competition is paying us right now because they're borrowing our lithium ion compound. And it's also more sustainable, much better than NICAD, which I'm sure you've heard. Um, we, we are moving to slightly more sustainable things. We haven't done anything with solar. Um, and appliances, no, we are not currently into, though we joked about doing a microwave. For a while, um, we, we looked into doing an iPad holder. Um, I have to say, our company, if you ever get a chance to tour it or anything, which AMA sometimes does here in Whitewater, is um, we have some of the most creative people working for our company. And their whole job is to go out to job sites, find something that they think is not as easy as it could be for someone and create a product for it. So the iPad holder was so that our battery would charge the iPad the entire time they held it, plus it had a durable case so if they dropped it, they can make a touch screen over it. Things like that we've been working on. It's not coming to market. It didn't, it didn't happen, but uh, we, don't, we don't stop at looking at things. Um, the coolest product that I think we came out with was about three years ago, which Jake is wearing. It is a heated jacket, so this is battery operated off of the same batteries that heat our tool platform. Um, it now comes in four different colors, just so you're aware, red, black, camo, and high visibility for the guys doing construction on the road. That's one of the coolest, most innovative products. I was in the field when that came out, and I can tell you, you sell tools every day, you sell drills every day. When I heard we're going to sell a heated jacket, I was like, Who's going to buy that? I don't know. I didn't think it would go. Um, call me small-minded, but I didn't. And it, we we're already sold out this year, almost sold out completely with the stock because it's flying off the shelves faster than we can manufacture it, and it's a hit. So in terms of innovation, we're doing things our, our competitors can't. I wish we would be more sustainable, and I think that's always on the forefront. Um, Sadly, tools more are used for sustainability. The windmills, they use tools to build it, everything, rather than tools being the sustainable part right now. Any more questions? All right, everyone, thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you, guys.